Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this line and wash sunset winter scene with birch trees. Um, I'm looking to get a really nice sort of evening glow in the sky and have that kind of reflected in the snow on the landscape a little um, and of course on the trunks of the trees. I'm being inspired by this wonderful photograph from Pixabay and as you just saw I'm not slavishly copying it but I'm definitely inspired by the colours and the light. I think it's really important that if you're being inspired or using a photograph that you remember that it's an artistic interpretation that you're trying to do um, and you don't have to sort of fill in every detail. Um, simplification of the scene is important but also trying to um, make the scene your own um, is I think a very important part of loose watercolour painting. So the first thing that I need to do is to get um, a loose pencil sketch down onto the paper, um, one that I'm happy with because I'm going to be using the line and wash technique here, which means creating an outline and some shading with um, waterproof fine liners. Um, I'm using black um, Faber Castell artist pit pens here. I'm using a chisel tip one and a small nib. Um, because I'm going to be using those, I think it's important to actually get a good, accurate pencil sketch down first so that you can erase any errors or anything that doesn't look quite right and redo it until you're happy with it. And then it's simply a matter of being confident enough to go over your pencil line work with the fine liners. Today I'm using a piece of Milford 100% cold pressed watercolour paper. It's made by St Cuthbert's Mill and it's got a lovely texture and it's a really nice paper to use. Um, it's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's mas masking tape and I'm starting off with my board flat on my desk. It's easier to draw the scene out that way. The paper is 15 inches by 11 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres and it's what's known as a quarter imperial sheet. My pencil is a carpenter's pencil, it came from a DIY store um, and I like it because it's a big chunky pencil, it's comfortable to hold. Um, and a nice um, heavy thick wide lead so that I can sketch very loosely with it. I can get enough sort of detail but without becoming too detailed if you see what I mean. It keeps me loose the same way as using large brushes keeps me looser when I'm painting. Using a large pencil helps me to stay loose um, when I'm getting the sketch in to start with. I'm making sure that everything balances and works well across the whole page. So now that I'm happy with my line work, then I can, or the line work sketch in pencil, I can start going over it using the finest of my two fine liners. So as I draw in my outline, I'm thinking about keeping the line nice and loose, um, making a sort of broken line in places, um, not making things too straight, making some sort of variation to the shapes of the branches, I'm trying to keep it looking nice and convincing as the branches, some of them come out from the main stem in front of the stem um, or the trunk and other branches will be behind. Of course, the, um, as the branches grow out towards the ends, um, they will send off thinner branches and these will get sort of thinner and finer the further away from the trunk. So I'm going to try and capture that sort of look. I'm also going to try and build up some texture on the, the, the trunk to start with at this line work stage. 
Um, this will mean that when I come to paint, it's just going to be a matter of putting in some of the washes. Um, and the washes will enhance the line work. So the line work is, is pretty much doing the main job here, which is why it takes quite a while. But that does mean, of course, that when we come to paint, it's going to be a lot easier. It's just going to be a matter of putting washes in the right place, um, keeping the light where we want it and building up the tonal values, the medium tones or the mid tones and the light tones. Um, a lot of the darker values will already have been um, put in place using this fine liner method for line and wash. And I think this is what makes it quite a beginner friendly way of painting. It means that um, once you've got the line work onto the page and you're happy with the way it looks um, for textures and tone, um, then it's a lot easier just to take the pressure off yourself and um, with a bit of practice to produce some really nice clean fresh washes that just do the job of enhancing the line work and really sort of uh, pulling out the detail. So you can see that I've changed from my small fine liner to my chisel tip fine liner and I'm putting in some of the wider um, twiggy but still fine branches that then will taper off to those finer ed edges. I'm also putting in um, some of the darker texture on the bark. And all I need to do now is continue to work over the entire painting with the line work in this same way, swapping from the fine liner to the darker li um, fine liner when I need it um, and adding in shadows, keeping on looking back at the reference photograph just for a bit of an idea and a guide. So just a reminder that I'm not trying to copy the photograph exactly. I'm using the photograph to really just um, help me to build up um, a loose impression of the scene using my artistic license to try and make it look de decorative and interesting. Now here's the line work almost completely finished. Um, so I'm just putting in a few sticks and twigs sticking out of the snow around the base of the foreground trees. Um, I think this just will help to link the washes together once I put them in. So now I need to make sure the ink is completely dry. So I'm going to leave it for about 10 minutes or so and then come back and paint it. So I'm going to use the wet and wet technique today. My board is now at an angle of 45 degrees and that means that gravity will help with the painting and just really keep the paint flowing down the page a little bit. So I'm wetting my page all over with a large flat wash brush. Then I let the, paint, the water soak in for a little while, about a minute. And now this is a mixture of various blues. I'm using cobalt blue, ultramarine blue and cobalt turquoise um, and a little bit of cerulean blue as well to just mix up this really nice deep blue. And I'm putting it on the paper with an Escoda synthetic mop size 16, which is a really nice brush for um, skies like this. Now I can mix up a sort of an orangey glow for the sky and I'm going to use um, a little bit of burnt sienna mixed with a touch of alizarin crimson just to take some of the sort of the, the terracotta glow out of it and pull that into my sky using a size 6 Escoda mop. It's easier for me to use two brushes for the sky, then I can use one brush for the blue and one brush for the sort of orange and yellow tones. Here is Queen Gold and um, a touch of lemon yellow. And I don't need to keep washing and drying out my brushes. So there's a tip for you. Have a couple of different brushes and then you can work quickly into a wet and wet wash um, without having to clean your brush in between. And then it's really important to bring my sky colours down into the snow. 
And now what I've done is I've mixed neutral tint into my blue colour and that's given me this lovely neutral blue, blue-grey, which is perfect for my distant trees, my tree shadows and the snow shadows across the foreground, um, which I can just play around with, uh, with the brush until I feel that they're about right. Everything's still damp, so it's all sort of diffusing softly, which is what I want. I just want this nice, soft, harmonious background wash. So I'm happy with my washes, so I'm going to lay my board flat. That means I won't get any more diffusion downwards, but everything will just dry and softly diffuse. I'm now going to leave it to dry for another minute or two until the sheen has just gone off the uh, background trees. And I'm going to use the corner of a plastic store card. And just before the paint dries, I'm etching through the paint, scraping back to the white of the paper. And that gives me a few sort of paler tree trunks and just breaks up the shape um, across the um, horizon line there and the same over on this side. And now I'm happy with the first washes so I shall leave it to dry completely and then come back and finish the painting. So here the painting is, it's completely dry and I've lifted the board back up to 45 degrees and I'm going to put in some um, darker mid-tones and a few sort of darks here and there, um, starting off using a Da Vinci synthetic round brush size zero, um, using the same sort of shade of grey but glazing over the distant tree line and because of the transparent nature of watercolour um, the underneath coat is showing through so this glaze is deepening the colour. I can then um, mix up a slightly darker mix and working around the branches that I etched in when the paint was still damp I can work in and around those marks um, starting keeping it nice and dark at the base of the trees um, and then lightening the wash very slightly as I go up then I can just add this little bit more detail and tone to the tree line here. These tree lines are in the mid-ground they are sort of quite a bit further forward from that distant tree line so we're trying to sort of build up um, a little bit of depth and distance by adding a bit more detail to the mid-ground tree lines here than we've got for that very distant tree line. And of course the most detail is in the foreground uh, which we put in um, with the line work, putting in the texture of the tree trunks etc etc. So I can just break up the top edge a little bit with a few sort of dotted lines and dotted marks and maybe smudge it here and there just to soften back. And then I can do exactly the same on the right side behind the main trees, making sure I work around the trunks, um, leaving them a little bit lighter. And then I can work some of these darks into my, my sort of clumps of grasses growing out of the snow here and there. So remember, this lovely grey is made with neutral tint added to our blue mixture. And now bringing down the tree shadows, taking them right off the tape so that we get that sort of nice um, crossing of the tape. So when the tape's removed, um, it looks like the tree shadows are going out of the frame. And now um, back to my flat brush and sweeping across some of that dark dry brush uh, just to give myself some more shadow across the foreground just to finish framing off the bottom. Now I've mixed up a little bit more burnt sienna with some neutral tint, a little bit of the blue 
um, and I'm going to paint in the trunks. Um, it will lighten back and I'm going to sort of dab the trunks back a little bit with a tissue um, so that I can bring back some of that lightness. But I do want these trunks to be in shadow. We're seeing the side of the trunks that's in shadow uh, because the light is in front of us. So I do need to darken up those trunks a little bit. And once all the birch trunks have been painted, again, going back in and dabbing out with the tissue if I need to, just to bring back a little bit of a few sort of paler areas. But we've now got those birch trunks nicely in shadow. So I think I'm going to pretty much call that finished. Removing the tape gives me the chance to look at the painting with fresh eyes. So as I peel away the tape, I'm pulling it away from the painting so to make sure that if it was to tear the paper, it would tear away and not into my painting. So I think my painting is just about finished. I could add a lot more detail. I could do a little bit more to it, but I always prefer to leave a painting looking slightly unfinished than overworking the painting. If we look at it closely, you can see it's still quite fresh. And the line and wash technique um, gives us the ability to add quite a lot of detail to the trees very simply at the line work stage so that when we come to paint it's just a matter of getting the washes cleanly in the right place. It's looking a little bit washed out here because um, of my studio lights in the winter. But here's a photograph which shows it sort of a bit closer to the way it looks in real life. So I hope that was helpful. If you like this video, then please give us a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Um, and if you click on the bell icon, you'll be notified whenever we post a new demo. Morgana, my daughter, posts her demos on Monday and then I come along on Wednesdays and Saturdays and post demos for you then. Um, and thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And if you'd like to support Morgana or me, then please follow the links below and we'd be really happy to see you in our respective Patreon groups where you'll find lots of exclusive demos. So thanks so much again and I'll see you soon and happy painting. Bye.